Hello everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. You know me, I'm Tom. Coming at you. Oh yeah. Where do we begin? Where do we begin? I'll be honest with you. This is going to be a really uh, tough video to do for me because I have absolutely lost my mind. I mean, I I don't know what I did. But let me tell you, let me give you the backstory because this is going to be about money. And, and, and you know I like to talk about money. As you know, I'm a true capitalist. So, but before we get started, <clears throat> I'm already choking up about this whole thing. It, it, it's got me choked up, folks. You, you, you will not believe the news I'm about ready to tell you. So go grab you one, because this is a shocker. Let me clear my throat. Ah, it's going to be a one beer video. Okay, Saturday was a beautiful day here in Raleigh. Sunday, it snowed, okay? Just give you the, the, the quick local weather update. All right, so Saturday, I went to the flea market, hanging around out there, trying to look for deals, you know, just seeing what was going on. I haven't been there in a long time, okay? So, that got boring real fast because it was still cool outside and really, really windy. And I said, you know what? Let me go do something. Let me go check on some parts because it was a beautiful Saturday. Everything was open. I said, let me go down to the Mercedes-Benz place and go to the parts department, the service department, and get ready to schedule. Because there you got to schedule your services way in advance to get in. Okay, so I figured, eh. I'm getting close to uh, 30,000 miles, but I got like 25, nine. And you know, you got a couple of months, you got to do it in advance. They stay, they stay that busy, okay? But I wanted to go check out some parts and you know, just basically make an excuse to go over there. Well, oh boy, I should have never gone. You won't believe what I did. <laughs> I'm telling you, you won't believe what I did. You're probably sitting right now behind your computer or your phone and saying, oh, crap, Tom, what did you do? Well, as you know, last week I paid off in cash my 2018 Ford 250 Super Duty. Done. Now, I said, I said in that video, you got to spend money to make money, right? That's always been my motto, because I understand how money works. Sometimes you have to put out some money before you can see the returns. Well, that that's kind of kind of what happened to uh, that uh, Saturday, but I didn't see it until today, because today was oh man, unreal. It was unreal. Because I said to myself, I said, you know. You're going to drop all this cash on this truck, which, you know, I needed to do that because the interest rate uh, wasn't the greatest in the world. It was like four, seven, five, you know, something like that. It wasn't great for 72 months. I had the loan almost five years, so I still had a little over two years to pay on it. Well, I just decided I had plenty of cash made from last year. Let me go ahead and spend it and just get this one, this one monkey off my back. Well, now I'm at the service department. I drive from the flea market, get down the interstate, and here I am in the service department. I'm bumming around and hanging out, and everybody knows me there. Hell, remember, I used to be an employee of Leith, okay? So I actually retired after 28 years. So these, these people all know me. They all know I got the Sprinter van. Well, within 10 minutes, guess, guess who I ran into? Oh, yeah, guess who I ran into? The guy who sold me the, the van, and he happens to be the manager because he's the only one attached to the Mercedes fleet commercial side, okay? His name is Max. In fact, I did a video of Max the day that I was delivering on the Mercedes two years ago, okay? You guys remember that when I shocked you when I bought it. Well, guess what he told me? He goes... 
he, 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 you know, well, he, he asked me a question first. He says, he goes, he asked me, he says, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm just checking on, I'm bumming around, basically. I'm bumming around. And, and, and I'm checking on some parts, you know, checking in on my service uh, appointments, uh, seeing how far out they are, blah, blah, blah. And he comes up to me, he goes, he goes, let me have your keys. And I go, what for? He goes, just, just let me have your keys. And I said, oh shit, something's up. But anyway, he drives the van back down to the sales department. Well, remember, I was in a car business for 28 years, and guess what I was? A car salesman, okay? I know what he was doing. I knew it. He was up to something. And I, I know damn well it was no good. He was up to no good. After about 10 minutes, he's outside. And there's this other guy walking around with him. They're just looking at it. And he comes over to me. He says, Tom, come here. Come back to my office. So I go into his office. He goes, look. He goes, uh, he goes, I know you just bought this. He goes, but let me just tell you what's going on. The market is so tight and the market is so hot. He goes, don't believe what you see in the news. You know, about car prices dropping. And yes, in, in certain segments they are. But guess what segment they're not dropping? Mercedes-Benz Sprinter vans. That's right. They said they're having such a problem, such a problem finding them, that people are lining up for a year. There's a year advanced waiting list. That's right. One year, one year advanced waiting list for Sprinters. And guess what the favorite color of choice is? White. <laughs> and guess, guess what I told you in one of the videos? That in 2022, they will discontinue the V6 turbo, okay? And replace them all with dual turbo four cylinders, okay? I did tell you that in one of the videos. And remember, I was looking at that black one, the last of the last four-wheel drive turbo v6 diesels well i had to pass on that one because i don't like black but anyway he told me he goes do you have he goes do you have the msrp sticker he had all this information i said yeah i got the msrp sticker he says he says go get it so i went to the to the the, the sprinter and got the original msrp sticker well you already know what that is it was forty eight thousand two hundred bucks Now, I got a deal on it because it was a leftover one year old sitting on the lot with no miles. They discounted it. Now, I'm going to run you the numbers. They discounted it $4,000 to get it out of their inventory. Okay? If they couldn't move that one, Mercedes Benz factory wasn't going to send them another one. Okay? That's how I got a deal on that particular sprinter. It was one year old. But I got four thousand dollars off right off the top, right? So it was forty-four two. Okay, I put down a big chunk of money, okay, because I wanted to pay it off quick. I wanted a low interest rate, and I wanted a really, really cheap payment because I already had a truck payment that was really, really high. Well, this is what he did. He went back to his guy and he goes, just stay here. He says, I'm going to make you an offer to buy your van. I said, there's no way, dude. I said, there, there's just no way. And also, too, remember, it was involved in an accident. It was all mechanical where some lady hit four cars. So it had scrapes, bumps, bruises, you know, a little basic, you know, normal stuff that, you know, for I used it for work. What can I tell you? You know, I have used all my, I put my power washing rig in, I hauled shit, all kinds of stuff, lumber in it. I called, I, you know, I mean, did all kinds of stuff. I towed with it. I did put a hitch on it for 500 bucks, okay? But I installed it, but the hitch cost $500. So now, here, here's the interesting twist. Here's the interesting twist. Keep, keep this in mind. It's almost due for its 30,000-mile service, which is the big one, okay, for Mercedes. 
that service was going to cost me $1,500. And I was only about 3,800, you know, 4,000 miles away from it, which would have been nothing. You know, a couple months, boom, done. I would have been in there. That's why I was trying to schedule an appointment. And, and, <coughs> excuse me. It needed a new set of tires because the tires that were on there were Michelin and they weren't under any warranty from the factory. So they were just basically a throwaway tire from the factory that were brand new and they would have only gotten about 35,000 miles and they would have been shot. And I'm at almost 26,000 miles. So I'm at five millimeters. It's, it, they're almost ready not to pass inspection. I could have got another maybe 8,000 miles out of them, maybe. But they were under no warranty. They weren't a 60,000 mile warranty placed on those tires. It was one of their, you know, bullshit tires that they throw on all their new vehicles and they don't have to stand behind it. So and I found that out through uh, Just Tire. Because I went down there to see if I could haggle with them on a new set. They told me, your tires are not under any, any, any mileage warranty. It's zero. So I said, shit. So anyway, I was staring, I was staring at a $2,500 bill all day long, okay, all day long. Plus it was in an accident, remember that. Tie rod, you know, a couple other little boo-boos, things like that. But here's what he did. He goes, we want your van bad. And I said, okay, well, you better step up to the plate. Oh man, woo! Did they step up to the plate? They gave me back all my money. That's right. You heard me right. They gave me back all my money. So I don't have a sprinter anymore. Now, here's the strange conclusion from this. Because not only did I get to drive this sprinter for two years... Make money with it. I was making money with it now, okay? And also, only did two services, which cost me a total of, for the day I bought it to the day I turned it in or sold it back to them, I only spent 700 bucks on it, okay? 700 bucks, that's it. And, you know, and the def, the def for the diesel, which is only, what, 13 bucks. So 713 bucks. I'll get ready to be staring at a $3,000 minimum bill, okay? Minimum. You know, probably $2,500 to $3,000 would have been probably where that number would have been. You know, when you add taxes and all the other crap in there. But the point was, is that, like I said, I put a big chunk of money down in cash, and they wrote me a check. They haven't wrote me a check yet. I got to wait for the title. We've already, in fact, I signed a power of attorney uh, Saturday. The MVR won the transfer of title and the contract and all that stuff. And they said, as soon as the title comes in, but they are a representative of Mercedes, so they're going to expedite the title pretty quickly. And he said, the second we get the title in hand, boom, we're going to call you up. We're going to cut you a check. And the check is not small, boys and girls. This is not a small check, okay? So in reality, I basically gave my money to somebody else. I drove it for two years. Yes, I did maintenance on it. You know what it was like? You know what it felt like? A two-year lease. It almost felt like a two-year lease, okay? And they even reimbursed me. They even reimbursed me for the hitch, okay? This is crazy, man. Okay, now what happened today? I went over to the hospital. I was getting ready to set up a time for my power washing for this weekend because we've had some strange weather. I was actually supposed to power wash the hospital this weekend, but it snowed, okay? It snowed Sunday, so I blew it off. Well, I went down there and just said, hey, look, you know, we need to postpone everything until uh, next week. And the manager there told me, he goes, hey, look, he goes, we've had a bunch of, we've had a bunch of stupid truck drivers run into the building and knock down a bunch of barriers. And we want to do something completely different than just plugging them back the way you've been doing it because they're not work. It's not working. So we want we want you to build a superstructure, you know, some sort of preventative barrier that if a truck or some other other vehicle hits this barrier, 
basically they damage their truck, okay? Or, you know, in other words, it stops them. So we all got together and came up with this pretty brilliant idea, which I can't go into the details, but it's pretty brilliant. And it's like kind of like a tank trap. You know, the way they did it in World War II, I think they called them the dragon, a dragon's tooth. Have you ever heard of that? It's called a dragon's tooth. Well, I'm building a dragon's tooth on this one corner of this one loading dock that keeps getting pulverized. Now they're getting to the point where they knocked the barriers over. Now they're actually hitting the building. They actually hit the building three times. And this is while, in other words, it happened all this past month, whatever, we're in March, right? So over the last couple, three weeks, <laughs> trucks have been plowing into the damn building because there's no barrier because it's, it's laying on the ground and all the concrete's all busted up and it's all a big pile of mess. Well, <laughs> so what I did was, is I bid on it. I bid on it. I bid on it a fair price, but it's still pretty high. And I just said, okay, being that I'm going to have to create this unique design, then I'm going to have to have some steel made. So that also incorporated... Uh, a sublet labor job, which of course I gave to my buddy Riley Foster over there in Mebane, Riley Foster's custom welding, or custom welding by Riley Foster. He's got also a YouTube ch channel. Uh, go check him out. Uh, custom welding by Riley Foster. Uh, uh, he, he's actually doing quite well. He's, a, he's an artist. He's, he's really good with structural steel. And what I did was I took uh, the big steel it's this big around, it's a big steel uh, pipe that they bear in the ground, they paint it yellow and they fill it with concrete and that's what they make barriers out of, okay? Well, when we looked at it, it's not buried very deep and it's buried in loose soil. So it's basically just like a preventative barrier. It's not really meant to stop anything. It's just meant to say, oh shit, you know, you run over a barrier. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-engineer this thing. We're going to make it longer. It's going to go in the ground deeper. It's also going to be reinforcing a massive block of concrete. <laughs> and like I said, it's going to be huge compared to what it was, way it was engineered before. Uh, this is going to be um, basically a barrier on steroids, okay? I'm going to make a dragon's tooth. In other words, the opposing forces, when it hits it, it's going to be so great that it, it will tear, it will, they will tear a truck up. Okay, on that note, I just wanted to give you an update. Now, here's kind of a culmination of this story. What I've decided to do, and, and I've been looking at this for a very, very long time. I had two car payments, okay? My truck and my van. You know, the kind of money I make, it never bothered me, okay? It just didn't bother me. But I said, how do I better invest my money you know, loosen it up, you know, with all these bank failures and all this weird stuff going on, which of course, you know, it's an isolated incident, but at the same time, I wanted to go liquid somewhat in, in another direction, you know, not with banks, but maybe with uh, CDs, uh, you know, 401ks or, you know, whatever, something a little bit more secure and grow the money because, you know, in 16 months, I automatically go full retirement or I have the ability to, to go full retirement. And I thought to myself, I said, the best way to do that is also to be very, very liquid and be debt free. So now here's the story. As of today, as of today, my mortgage, my, my town home here in the city is the only thing I owe on. I have no credit card debt. I have nothing. I owe nobody nothing. My insurance per month, which was really, really high because I have everything on a multiple policy business and everything like that, dropped in half. Okay? And that's with my favorite local uh, nationwide representative, Jody Shover. And, you know, him and I have been real close friends. We're close friends on Facebook. And a lot of other people that I know, we're all, you know, we're all interconnected in some way, shape, or form, especially when it comes to business. My banker, my CPA, my bookkeeper, you know, my insurance agent. These are the very, very important people in my life. And I've also did a video about that too. Who do you have to trust when it comes to your money and business? And you have to trust five people. And that's what I always say. And that's what I always do. So I always treat these people well. 
and I want to make sure that they treat me well and show me respect, especially since I'm spending the money with them. Now, and I get good service. You know, that's all it boils down to from the people you buy your car from, uh, you know, to, you know, the people you work for, you know, it's just all, it's all respect across the board. So, and on that note, all the money that I basically have spent in the last two years, I'm now back to, back to even, pretty much even. So I got the use of a great van. I loved it. I had a great time, traveled all over the place, Charleston, Virginia, you know, just had a great time, went to the coast a bunch of times, had a, made me money, and I got all my money back. So now I'm going to take that money and I'm going to put it in some high-yield CDs because right now the CDs are, I've, I've found a couple of uh, different uh, 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 financial entities that uh, they're going as high as 4.57, okay? on a one year CD, but with X amount of dollars in it. Okay, you can't, you can't go in there with 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. This is, this is one that is a minimum of $5,000. You start with $5,000 and you'll get 4.57 on a 12 month CD. And I'm gonna roll over 20,000 into four different CD packages. So for me, I think now, instead of paying somebody a car payment, maintenance, gas, time, all that stuff, I'd rather take that money and reinvest it. And now that the truck is fully paid for, that becomes my primary workhorse, okay? And today, with this job, also the excavator, that's right, the excavator it is employed again because I get to use it and I charge for it because the, the reinforcement on this barrier is big. So I gotta dig a big hole. <laughs> and guess what's gonna dig it? The excavator. So it's got a job again. All right. Thank you for being on my channel, boys and girls. Really, I appreciate that. And you guys, have uh, you've always been loyal to me and I know a lot of you, a lot of you been with me since day one, eight and a half years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've been on YouTube almost 10 years now. So all I want to do is say thank you. Leave those comments. Give me those thumbs up. Share, like, subscribe. Go to Facebook. I'm on Facebook if you're in Facebook. Uh, just help help a brother out, man. <laughs> help a brother out. Uh, give me the 25,000 subscribers. I love you. You know that. Tom out of here. Leave those comments. I'll talk to you tonight.